Leading enterprise customers trust Tidal to manage their most critical applications and dependencies. Today we'll be demonstrating how to use Tidal repository for organising, versioning and promoting schedule changes from development to test to production. When implementing Tidal, it's a commonly used best practice to establish separate instances for each stage of your development lifecycle. Separate instances provide the benefits of improved predictability, quality and security when you're promoting application and schedule updates through the life cycle. Managing changes across instances can be challenging. The good news is that Tidal Repository does just that by providing centralised change management for workload automation schedule elements. Designed for Tidal administrators and developers, Repository stores, organises and promotes schedule changes from development to QA to production. It provides a central record of all schedule elements, it integrates with DevOps, CI and CD processes, and it provides complete audit trail of who made what changes and when. The benefits this brings for administrators are that centralised change management gives us the ability to revert to a prior version of the schedule in the event of misconfiguration. It provides a single source of truth rather than disparate instance databases. We can use role-based access control to enable the appropriate sharing of schedule elements. And the export import feature allows the schedule elements to be stored in external change management systems. The benefits for developers include integration with CI and CD processes for DevOps compliance, reduced wait times through the enablement of delegated roles and responsibilities, and self-service capabilities to manage relevant promotions through the development lifecycle. So let's take a look at how this works. Each user of Tidal Repository can own their personal workspace, with the access to the components which make up Tidal Repository determined by security authorization policies. Connections make up the Tidal instances the repository user can access. In this demo we have access to development and to the pre-production Tidal instances. Mappings allow you to automatically map the names of objects in one Tidal connection to objects of the same type in another Tidal connection. Policies provide constraints on the objects you have access to based on naming conventions, and these augment the security policies which determine access to the different functions within the Tidal repository. The pipeline enables the movement of objects from a connection to a repository and from a repository to another repository and or a connection. The repository is simply the store with versions of all data selected and processed via the pipeline. So let's now look at how we can move our objects between repositories and titled connections. First we'll pull a group of jobs from a connection, in this case our titled development instance, to a repository. You can see here you the connection on the right, the list of jobs available in that connection on the left, and in the middle the Tidal repository with the tick indicating that one group of jobs already exists as a version in the repository. Let's pull the jobs, select a group. You can see that uh, jobs and groups below are auto-selected. Then we can unselect the groups and jobs that we're not interested in and simply press the sync button. We'll see that in progress appears in the console. And now we can see that that pull has been successful. Now that we've pulled the job objects from our development environment, we can switch to the repository. These are the jobs that we pulled and by highlighting any of these objects down below, we could have the opportunity to delete them prior to the commit. As it is, we can just commit now, give this version a name and a description. And there's the version committed to the repository. You can export the repository or a version of the repository which will include all of the elements that you select and that means that you can uh, put it into a format which is suitable for import into uh, an external tool or application which could also help in your DevOps environment. 
To do that, we simply select the elements that we want to export, press the export button and we can see all of the elements are selected there, accept, and then we have the opportunity to download the export that we've just created and that's zipped up in their JSON format. Conversely, with the import feature, we can take an existing zipped up JSON file and overwrite one of the versions in our repository. To do that, we say yes to the prompt there, select the file that we want to import, and the import will begin. And a couple of seconds later, we can see that we've had that successfully imported. From the committed version, we can compare differences, either with a connection, in other words, another title instance, or with a repository. This could be another repository, or in this example, just the same repository, simply an earlier version. If we go back to Demo 20, we can see that there's one job that's changed inside there. Double clicking allows us to see that the parameters have changed from the uh, previous version, which was 14, to the current version, which is 15 for that job parameter. Bulk Update allows you to perform an edit or delete on jobs or variables inside the repository. So we can replace the job parameters with different values and then commit those changes to a new version of the repository. To do that, we simply do an edit on the selected jobs. We're going to find and replace inside the job parameters. We're going to look for that job parameter that's 15, replace it with the value of 14. So you can see it's found five jobs inside there with the, that value. And I'm going to confirm their replacement with the new value. Once I accept that, it's been done successfully and we simply need to commit that version. And from there, of course, if we decided we didn't want those changes, we can revert them. Now that we've made those changes to our jobs, it's time to promote them into our pre-production environment. And we're going to move them into the pre-production environment under the Accounts Payable group from the repository. And to do that, we simply select the correct pipeline, which in this case is a push from the Accounts repository to the Accounts on pre-production. So we switch the pull to a push and I'm going to select all jobs. If I expand on that, you can see that we'll get some further information about the, the things that we're transferring. We can see that we're transferring the latest version of those jobs, and we can see that we're using a mapping file on the target system to map those job elements to those on the pre-production system. And we can also, if we want, annotate. So we can just put some extra information, some custom information, about the transfer. Once we've done that, all we need to do is press the sync button and wait for that to complete. So the console will appear, we can see it's in progress. And now it's complete. If we go onto the target system and refresh that, you can see that those jobs have now appeared under accounts payable. And we can see some information on each of those regarding the uh, different annotation that we put on there. So you can see that the job parameters change information is in there. And it's also added some more information for the audit trail about who did what and when they did it. Notice that if we hit the save button here, we can store the selections we made and the push instructions as a task. And a task gives you a one-click option which can perform the push from the user's main menu if security permits. So we just need to give that a name. See next. These are all the objects that were included in that push and we'll confirm that. And from there we just need that to, to add that to the uh, workspace. So we'll edit the workspace. Select that task and save it. And then from that works, workspace, we can just click and then we can run.
that task. Everything we've seen today is supported without the requirement for a user interface. We can use the REST-based API, for example, and we can use this to uh, execute the task that we just created, which means we could schedule the task as a title job. And we can test out these calls with the Swagger UI, which is provided in title repository. Here we would go to our movement controller and we would then take the run movement by workspace and task ID and we would provide the parameters of the task that we've just created. Try it out. The ID for the task which we've previously found and the ID for the workspace which is we've also previously found through a different call. Execute that and we'll get the results of this down there. So that concludes the demonstration for Tidal Repository. What we've seen in this demo is that Tidal Repository supports critical tasks both for administrators and developers. We've seen that the user workspaces provide access to both repositories and Tidal instances, allowing for a version-controlled single source of truth for all Tidal objects and instances. This enables Tidal object builds to be pulled and pushed as they are promoted from or averted between development and production. Security and policy rules ensure that access to Tidal instances can be closely controlled to ensure self-service and delegation with compliance. These self-service capabilities, along with features such as import-export and a REST-based API, provide developers with reduced wait times, automation and integration with CI-CD processes. This concludes the demonstration of Tidal repository. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see more information on the services that Tidal has to offer, please visit us at tidalsoftware.com or contact us at info at tidalsoftware.com. Thank you.